Hello, and welcome back to Live From My Watch. I'm Captain Stoner Steve, and I'm recording my adventures as I travel through space and time with a small crew, including Big Gary, who is currently showing me the enormous chunk of ship that's now missing thanks to a bite from one of the local guard dogs. These beings must be quite larger than I at first thought. I forgot I had my normalization settings on, which adjust my vision to make everything look familiar. So I've turned off <laughs> that for the next time that we go exploring. We can see what we're really up against. Whew. Thankfully, the sun in this solar system charges my soul charge just as well as the one in my own. One of these days I will teach you the fast charge meditation technique. But for now, let's see about fixing this ship. Hugsy the penguin is our Head of maintenance and repairs. You may remember Hugsy from starring in a popular sitcom in the 90s, depending on when you're receiving this and where. But if it's the timeline and the place I'm thinking of. Anyways, that's not our Hugsy. We have a different Hugsy, different timeline. This Hugsy is a mechanic. Hugsy is a penguin of very little words. Did you have anything to say, Hugsy? Nope, just working. Good penguin. Maybe we can catch up later. Oh, Hugsy. How long do you think before we can get airborne? What should we plan on? Holding up two flippers. Wings? I, I'm sorry, I don't know what they're called. But two. Okay, so. Yeah, a, two of whatever a penguin's arms are worth. That's how long we'll be here. Which should be enough time to do some more research. On the golden bone. That's supposed to be somewhere here in the Canida Sprangicus 3 4 timeline. Or whatever it, the heck the computer readout called it when we first got here. So, why is this bone so important? It's <sighs> a great question. You sure ask a lot of great questions. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for all of them. But perhaps we can get to a few of those questions right after this break. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Automatic Door Openers. Automatic door openers are endorsed by the Cat Nation as the only humane way to care for your special furry friend. Automatic door openers will open the door for your cat by providing a handy, dainty little push button right at their level. 
The door opener is silent, so it doesn't startle. The delicate feline sensibility. Get one today, won't you? Says my cat. And now back to the show. Yeah, those broadcasts keep cutting in. I'm sorry, I don't know what uh, what uh, ad will run. But amazingly, in 43, 3, 4, wait, whatever timeline this is, you're still using ads. I know that you use ads in your time, and I'm hoping this will help with the revenue for Steve the adult who I'm trying to send this to. I hear the cries of either a circus or a robot rebellion. Not sure which. But I shall choose to stay in the ship for now and do some research. Are you coming in? Okay. Well. That was. Hey. Okay. Thank you. I was head of security. On patrol. <sighs> so, booting up the computer here. Let's see. I have my interactive desktop cleared here. And let's just flip our fingers around a little and this and that, make facial expressions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tippity tap tap type on a keyboard that's virtual. And boom, the golden bone. Here it is. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, I knew that part. Mm hmm. Okay, and interesting. Interesting. So the golden bone is important because it is highly desired by treasure seekers from across. The realities. And oddly enough, it only exists in five realities. No one knows why, although some histories have been traced, but it's all theoretical as we now know history to be. Let's see here. So we want the golden bone because we were hired to get it. Ah, uh, now the truth comes out, mercenaries. Is that really the storyline here? I can't make it any better. Ah. Uh. Queen Rotwill. Rotwill. Queen, Queen Rotwell asked us to find it. We encountered her at an event for beings who have undertaken extraordinary achievements, uh, guest, of course, and uninvited at that. But the Queen took a liking to us and asked... Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, Captain the Guard says it's all clear. Do we know what it was? Is it a robot uprising? Hmm. Mm. Okay. Undetermined, but seems to be some sort of forced uh, human robot labor. But forced might be editorialization. 
My Captain of the Guard is a uh, species of cat, or cat-like species. Um, and they tend to be very independent, right? But excellent at guarding. Uh -huh. Because as we know from television and movies, the characters and stories just need to be tropes, stereotypes, something familiar we can connect with. So we're getting the golden bone for uh, Queen Rodwell, and she wants it to give to her mother in honor of her 25th bark on the throne. Wow. So that's what we're looking for. And it's lost somewhere here. And I don't know where. Mm hmm. Really? Captain of the Guard just said that I uh, might be able to help one of their recruits. Mentioned over hearing a local talking about an object that might be the golden bone. This bears further investigation. Sometime later, I'm now recording again. It turns out the dog bone is being held by one of the toughest bosses in this level. I've switched my vision goggles to video game mode. Retro edition. Everything's 16-bit. It's fantastic. We're going after a mob dog that looks like a poodle. And to find the base, we're going to need to talk to someone. So we're on our way to look for a friendly local to help us. My security team has been doing recon on local that seems to dwell next door to our parking spot. Possibly also an explorer like we are. This one in the shape of a French bulldog. Adorable. But that's beside the point. Can they be beneficial? Hi, do you mind if we talk to you? Yeah, no, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm Stoner Steve. How are you? Uh, do you mind if I record this? No. Okay. All right. All right, so that pup, Lupin, very helpful. Lupin was able to direct us to the hideout for the mob dog. It looks like a poodle. The mob dog has an apartment building they've constructed into a den of hedonistic pleasure. And on the top floor, the golden bone. Am I going to have to battle through all, like, how tall is this apartment building? I'm going to have to battle up every level. Oh. This is like uh, Judge Dredd or something, man. Come on. Or Inferno Tower. Tower of Inferno? What is that old movie called? Anyways. I'm going to need some sustenance to the cafeteria. Uh, 
as the squirrel feast on yesterday's thrown out pumpkin. So shall Gary the slug feast on yesterday's pizza. A proverb. Hi and welcome back. I am captain of this dimension traveling ship. My name's Stoner Steve. We were on a mission to find the gold bone that had been stolen from Queen Rotwell and was being held by a mob dog, Poodle. Mick Poodleson. Mick Poodleson is in her multi story doghouse of terror that I'm now approaching with my small crew, which includes Big Gary, Big Gary, and the captain of my guard. Commander Meiji. Commander Meiji must be on a reconnaissance mission because I do not see her around. And finally, Hugsy, our engineer, stayed back at the ship. But I do have an incoming transmission. Hugsy, this is your captain. Go. Forget about it. The ship is going to be fine. Thanks, Hugsy. That's good to know. Yeah, don't worry about it. Forget about it. I'm Hugsy. Thank you, Hugsy. I think there was something wrong with that transmission. It did not sound like the voice I recognized. But we must deal with what we have at hand. And we are facing a wall of some kind of robotic canine-like creatures that are barreling towards us at a surprising rate. Ruh, 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 ruh. Big Gary. I agree with Big Gary. We may need to retreat. Wait a minute. What was that flash? It's Commander Meiji. And the rest of the cat guards. They've leapt on the backs of the robot canines and are turning them off. They're powering down. Commander Meiji, how did you do it? As the last cries of the robot dogs fizzles away, we're able to enter the first level of this three-story doghouse. Level one, finished. We must interrupt this broadcast to bring you a message from our sponsors. Hello, children. Are you enjoying the sunshine? That's good. Remember to keep the sun charged. Solar cell batteries must be stocked. Don't let your subscription run out for solar cell batteries. The only way to keep your sun powered. This ends the transmission. The elevator door dings and we step out, faced with our foe. Finally reaching the third level of the doghouse of terror. Poodle McPoodleson is standing on top of a large desk surrounded by her hench dogs. All with semi-automatic Nerf pellet guns. Well, I don't know what their weapons look like actually, but I'm wearing uh, the Nerf filter, which turns all weapons into uh, Nerf guns. Do you guys still have that in your time? They're like soft, foamy, pellety things. Bounce right off my shield, baby. We run right towards the desk. Pow, boom, bop. 
give a couple dog treats to the hench dogs. They're happy to step aside and we confront McPoodleson. McPoodleson, I'm Stoner Steve. This is my small crew. We're interdimensional time travels, time travelers. And what do you have to say for yourself? Well, 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 laddie. <coughs> Just kidding. Did you think I was going to have some kind of cute voice? I'm Mick Poodleson. I'm the baddest bitch in this town. And I can say that because I'm a female dog. Big Gary? She has a point. Shh, be quiet, all of you. This gold bone is mine, fair and square. I stole it with my own beautifully manicured paws. Big Gary. They are nicely done. What, did, was that a shop around here? Could we... Silence, fools! Now, <clears throat> what was I saying in my evil villain voice? At that moment, Commander Meiji and the rest of the cat guards crash through the window behind McPoodleson. <laughs> McPoodleson ducks for cover. <laughs> Commander Meiji swoops down and snatches the gold bone from its pedestal on top of the desk. Well done, Commander Meiji. You will be getting another medal for your cat in arms. The gold bone is uh, about the size of my arm. Pretty big, actually. Um, quite heavy as well. I think we'll let Big Gary uh, handle this one. Big Gary. Thanks, buddy. The queen will be so happy to have this back to give to her mother. And I think that'll be another mission. Well done. Let's return back to the ship and uh, see if we can really forget about it. Like um, Hugsy, our engineer, said. <laughs> this was a weird timeline and a weird planet. They're not all like this. There's some really great... Sorry, just a moment. I have a an alert coming in. Beep, 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 beep. It's a text alert. I'm just scrolling here through my watch, turning the dial, da -da 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 -da, and reading the alert. It's from Galactic, a Galactic news source, and it says, oh no, one of my dear friends. A fairy is in danger. We have to go immediately. We'll drop the gold bone off on our way to the next adventure. I hope you can find the data log for that file if you're interested. Also, please share this with someone, uh, with another traveler that might find it interesting or just really dumb. I have been your captain as we blast off three, two, one, to our next timeline and dimension somewhere in the greater galaxies of the Cosmo of space. Until then, I've been Stoner Steve. Safe travels, friend.